2,000 kilometers lie between them. The Escobar family, separated by Trump's immigration orders. Two years ago, Jose Escobar was deported from the US to El Salvador, where he was born. He was forced to leave his wife, Rose, and their two children in Houston, Texas. They can only visit Jose once a year, a family torn apart. All Rose has left is her photo album, memories of happier days in a bygone past. Ever since her husband was deported, Rose has had to single-handedly fend for the family, but she won't give up. It's the first flower any guy has ever given me, and Jose is my first and only boyfriend, so, um, when I started this book, I said, you know what, let's see how far it'll go, and it's still going. Um, he gave it to me, and I told him, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and put tape on it so it can last me. And as you can see, it's still, it's still holding on. The couple has been married for 13 years. Jose's deportation two years ago was completely unexpected. Rose still remembers that call as if it were yesterday. Are you sitting down? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, I need you to, to calm down. You todo va a estar bien. Meaning everything's going to be fine. And I said, okay, Jose, you're scaring me. Yeah, dime. He goes, they deported me last night. Those words changed my life forever. Rose is a US citizen, but marrying Jose wasn't enough for him to attain citizenship. Walter is eight years old. It's 7.30 in the morning and he's excited. It's the last day of school before summer vacation. Okay. The teacher, Camilla King, has the same ritual each morning. She greets each student personally. Okay, everyone hands off. So I'll choose, I'm gonna choose who's gonna do it. Jade, left hand on yellow. Tomorrow, they're off to El Salvador to see his dad. Oh, Genesis, left hand twist. They haven't seen each other for a whole year. That means air. So I'm excited to go see my dad, but the scary part is the plane because there might be a storm tomorrow and I hope it doesn't affect the plane. So what I'm going to ask is whatever technology you have, please come put it on my desk. The homeroom teacher, Camilla King, has known Walter since kindergarten. Ever since his father was deported, she says the boy has changed. Yes, ma'am. That's something that's really hard for me as an adult to watch, is to be him very sad by the fact that he does not have his father with him every single day. Um, and I know that that's not something I can change. Rose Escobar is on her way to the lawyer. She wants to bring the case before court so that her husband can come home. Like many others, Jose came to the country as an undocumented minor. While previous administrations deferred deporting these childhood arrivals, Trump suddenly rescinded the decision. Jose was one of the first victims of the new immigration policy. Hello, Rose. How are you? So nice to see you. Please come in. As you can see, the heap of files on your husband is growing. What would you like to talk about today? Is there any news? It's all still pending. We've requested that the decision to deport him is reversed. It's taking longer than we had expected. As you know, the Trump administration demands additional security checks. That's slowing everything down, and the authorities are overwhelmed. He didn't have a criminal record. He was working. He was paying taxes. He had a family in the United States, so that was not a priority. The government was very strict at the beginning, now this administration, oh, everybody's a priority, until they realized they don't have beds for that many people and they could not arrest this many people. So they're exercising it, but, but not equally. So some will get a break, some will not, some are arrested, some are not. And what it has created, a lot more confusion uh, for everybody.
Lawyers such as Rayad Gonzalez speak of arbitrary treatment and accuse the authorities of inhumane conditions at their detention facilities. You can see it, especially when you find out that statistics show that this year already 27 people have died in custody when that was not the number of, of four or five presidents in, in other presidencies. So clearly there's a problem. So do you Dinner want to with the Escobar family. For a brief moment, everyone can be together. Pues si? I'm going to move him over there. The mother and her children at the table. The father patched in live on the screen. All part of their daily struggle. Okay. Did you see Carmen's graduation pictures? Yeah. 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 But did you see Carmen get perfect attendance? Mom, I put it down. I put it down. Okay, stop. Carmen got perfect attendance and she also, she passed, uh, she mastered all her, uh, her, her grade, her numbers. And also, your house is going to start learning math. Yeah, what's one plus one? Mm. Look at my finger. What's one plus one? It's okay, it's plus okay. One plus one. Off to El Salvador. It's their favorite time of the year. Ahead of them lie four weeks of being an intact family. Democratic Texas Congressman Al Green is waiting for them at the gate. He's been fighting for Jose Escobar's return since the beginning. He's worried about his safety. There are gangs there and they extort and they also don't take kindly to people who have close relationships with persons who are from America, the United States, who may be trying to in some way infringe upon what they see as an asset. Mom, are you excited? Rose Escobar is lucky. As a hospital receptionist, she's allowed to take her entire year's vacation at once. In the US, that's rarely the case. Shortly before reuniting with her husband, she's awash with emotions. Honestly, I got mixed emotions right now. I am stressed, um, I'm nervous, but I'm so excited. Like, I, I want to cry, but I'm not going to cry. But if I do cry, it's, it's going to be happy tears because I just can't wait to actually hug him. And to see the kids just hug him over time. Welcome to San Salvador, where the local time is 11.13. The San Salvador airport. Finally, the moment has arrived. The family meets in a secured area. The U.S. Embassy and the congressman both have security concerns. No cameras allowed. It's awesome, you know, finally back as a family again, you know? So for now, I get to enjoy both. Look at them. Last time, last time I saw her, Ow. she was smaller, now she's growing so big. You smart. She talks now. Last time she she wasn't talking. Now she talks. And Walter just getting tall, uh, doing his homework by himself. Now it's it's steps that you know goals that your childrens do that you want to be there for for them. And he he obviously wants to be there, but can't because of the circumstances we're in right now. Time to say goodbye to Al Green. He's continuing on to the U.S. Embassy, where he's scheduled to talk about Jose Escobar's case. Oh, princess. High five. Well, I can achieve uh, information about his situation that I can relate to the people back in my country, uh, as well as my co uh, fellow Congress people. They need to know what's happening here. And hopefully, with the legislation that we filed, we have a bill that will reunite all families similar to this one. When or where that would ever happen is still unclear. For now, the Escobar family is more concerned with arriving in a country that feels foreign to them, although they have their roots here. El Salvador is one of the poorest countries in Latin America, 
with one of the world's highest murder rates. At home with Jose's parents-in-law, this is where he stays, two hours from the capital, San Salvador. Moments like these are especially precious to the Escobar family. Carmen, wait, 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 you Carmen. I know, uh, Carmen, do you have a plus two? Let me see. So you can add two to Walter and then we can move it to mommy so she can get eight. You got plus two? You got plus two? Ah, no. No, she no. doesn't. Okay. So you get two cards. And this is, my be this is our bedroom. This is where I stay. Right now it's a mess because, of course, we've got four people now. Jose considers himself an American, and here others do too. A few days ago, he was robbed right on the front doorstep. Armed gangs live in this neighborhood. I was going crazy. I couldn't work because I was stressing. I lost so much hair, and then dealing with the kids, and then finding out how I'm going to pay the bills, and then this was like the number one thing that I just asked him, please, if you don't want me to worry too much, just stay inside the house. I don't go out. Because I want, I don't want, I, I want to avoid any of that to ever happen to me. So I just rather stay in the house all the time. If I go to the store, it's probably like a block away. Just go back and forth. To avoid drawing attention, the Escobar family stays within their small neighborhood. They want to keep the little time they have together as carefree as possible. This morning I woke up and I and I already said one day's already gone and I'm trying my best not to think about it or try to like, you know, slash down another day, another day. I'm just trying to just live on the moment right now and just absorb whatever we can right now as a family. The clock is ticking at the end of the day. So it's just a matter of time that uh, just four weeks. Four weeks in which they try to leave their worries behind. It could be a long time before they can be together again.